Welcome to Tell Me a Ghost Story, the late night call in podcast where we delve into the world of the supernatural and explore the eerie and unexplained. I'm your host, Michelle Newman. This podcast features true stories from our callers that will send shivers down your spine and leave you questioning the existence of the afterlife. So grab a cozy blanket. Turn down the lights. Hey, Michelle. It's Maggie, your old friend from Ever Washington. Uh, I have a story about my birthday trip that my husband and I took to Port Townsend, Washington, which is over on the peninsula, which is a very neat old, like, seafaring slash mining town that's super spooky and has a lot of weird ghosty history. One of my favorite places in the world is the Palace Hotel in Port Townsend. And it's this old Victorian hotel that used to be a brothel, like they all did. And my birthday is the day before Halloween, so it's really fun to go around my birthday because, of course, all the spooky stuff is happening in Port Townsend. In fact, while we were there, there were a ton of, like, ghost haunting expeditions and things that that were put on by the city, but they're all way too expensive to be a part of. They're like, seriously, they're like 120 bucks each. It was ridiculous. So we get to the Palace Hotel, and as we're checking in, there are a group of women standing in the corner. A couple of them are dressed in Victorian garb, and they're talking about ghost stuff. So I immediately just jumped in and was like, oh my god, what's going on? And uh, listened to their stories, which was a lot of fun, because everybody had a story about the Palace Hotel. So that night we go out, we have some drinks at the bar downstairs, we wander around the city, we have a great time. And when we come back into the hotel, it's dead quiet. Everybody's either out and about or in their rooms or whatever. And we're just a little tipsy, so we're enjoying ourselves. And as we walked up the many, many flights of stairs to get back to the third floor to get to our room, we were talking about... the the history of the ghost stories in the Palace Hotel. And supposedly there is a ghost there named Claire, who was one of the prostitutes that I think was murdered, but I'm not 100% sure. You know, and and supposedly there's the ghost of Captain Tibbles, who built the building and lived in it for a really long time. And, you know, all different sort of spooky things happen in this hotel. And there are a ton of stories and ghost stories surrounding it. So we're talking about this as we're, you know, kind of walking down the long hallway to our room. And the really neat thing about the Palace Hotel is that the building, the Captain Tibbles building that it's in, was built in like the late 1800s the building next to it was built in like like the like the 1910s 1920s sometime in there and sometime in the last like decade or so they the hotel bought that building next door you know renovated it and made it a part of the palace hotel the thing is though is that the palace the original palace is like creepy and victorian and really pretty and a little frayed around the edges in the way that like an old victorian hotel should be whereas the new portion of the hotel is all modern and sleek and the apartments are very like furnished in a modern way versus the victorian way in the old part of the building and there is on the third floor a path between the two buildings and you can even see not only the original wallpaper uh, that was hanging in the palace when it first opened but you can see like the brick as you pass through as you're entering one building from another and as we were walking around because we were just checking it out as we were walking around in the new part of the building the new building the air felt wildly different. Like the air was bright and light. It was happy. It was kind of hopeful. And as soon as you pass through that brick walkway into the old Palace Hotel, the air was stifling and thick and really heavy, kind of weighed you down. And we found that very odd because we kept kind of going back and forth between the two buildings uh, in this little walkway. And you could feel it. You could feel the air change and the vibe change. As if, like, all the history of the Palace Hotel stayed in this building and just sort of grew and got heavier and got, 
you know, spookier and creepier. So we settle into our room, which is the Miss Kitty room. And it happens to be one of the corner rooms on the side of the building. So you get this absolutely beautiful view of downtown Port Townsend, the ferry coming in and out from the islands across the way. Just really, really beautiful, perfect weather, sunny, crisp, cool, because it's the you know middle of fall. So that night we go to sleep. And in the middle of the night, I got woken up by footsteps from the ceiling above me. And I was really annoyed because we live in the bottom level of an apartment and we always have somebody walking above us. So even on our vacation, here I am getting woken up in the middle of the night by somebody walking above me. And I found that very annoying, but like, what are you going to do? You're in a hotel. It's an old building. It creaks. I go back to sleep. The next morning we wake up, we, you know, bum around before going to get breakfast. And I mentioned to my husband how annoying it was that we heard footsteps above us. And he went, yeah, that is really annoying. Like I heard them in the middle of the night too. And I was like, what the hell were they doing up there? So we just shrugged it off because, you know, what are you going to do? And we go downstairs and exit the building to go out to breakfast. And then Steve remembers that he left something in the hotel room, so he's got to run back up. And I'm sitting there outside, looking at the building, looking up at our windows to our room, and I realize that we're on the top floor. There is nobody above us. But I distinctly heard footsteps walking back and forth above me in the middle of the night. So I went into the lobby and I was talking to the receptionist and I was like, just out of curiosity, is there any space above us? Like, is there a room where, you know, people go and get supplies or anything? Like, is there any way somebody would be walking above us? And she was like, no, not at all. And I was like, because I heard footsteps last night. And she pulls out this huge black bind order and like flops it on the table between us. And is like, this is filled with ghost stories from this hotel. You should put yours in too. Thank you, Maggie, for calling in with your story. I was doing some research and found this posting on Reddit by Best Clerk 935 and it goes, Why can people hear ghost and spirit footsteps, but they can't clap or pick things up when asked? Why is it always footsteps? Do they have special ghost shoes? And I think this is a valid question. If they have ghost shoes, then they have ghost shoe stores. And is that why we have all the ghost malls now? That's all we have this week, folks. Do you have a ghost story? Call 701-484-2666. That's 701-484-2666. Or go to tellmeaghoststory.com and leave your story there. Go ahead and leave me a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. Was something particularly scary in this episode? Or maybe you've had a similar experience. Leave your comments via our Spotify page. Thank you to all the callers who left messages this week. And as always, I'm your host, Michelle Newman, signing off. See you next week.